So I wanted to say something about experimental pharmacological treatments. One aspect of psychiatry research that's known for the moment is that there aren't many new drugs coming through the usual discovery pathway. So that's via industry. And so there's been more of a focus on repurposing pharmacological treatments that are available anyway, which then can be rapidly repurposed for their use in patients with treatment-resistant depression. I'll just start by talking about anti-inflammatory agents. And it's been known for some time that patients with depression, particularly resistant depression, have peripheral markers of inflammation. For example, increased levels of C-reactive protein, CRP, the interleukin, IL-6, and tumor necrosis factor. More directly, we know that when patients who aren't depressed received inflammatory cytokines such as interferon, they have a high risk of experiencing the symptoms of major depression subsequently. So this raises the idea that perhaps drugs that have an anti-inflammatory effect might be useful to treat depression, particularly resistant depressed patients particularly those depressed patients who've got evidence of inflammatory markers in their peripheral blood tests. So, so I would like to mention a study which employed two conventional antidepressants first. So this was an investigation that randomized a large number of patients with depression to either the serotonergic agent, escitalopram, or the noradrenergic agent, the tricyclic nortriptyline. And what the authors found was that overall, there was no difference in outcome between the two drugs. However, if you split the patients according to their baseline levels of C-reactive protein, CRP, then there did seem to be a differential response. So patients who had CRP levels above 2 mg per litre did rather better with nortripsaline than with the escitalopram. However, the converse was the case for patients with low levels of CRP, less than one, they did better with escitalopram than they did with nortriptyline. Because CRP is a readily available laboratory test, it might be worthwhile measuring in patients with resistant depression because it suggests that perhaps if it's raised, nortriptyline might be an option. Of course, the evidence for inflammation in patients with resistant depression also suggests that there might be a role for specific anti-inflammatory treatments in improving depressive symptomatology. There is one trial with a TNF alpha blocker, infliximab, which was added to the medication of treatments with resistant depression. In general, this didn't seem to do better than placebo in the overall group of patients. But in those patients who had high baseline levels of CRP, suggesting evidence of inflammation, infliximab was more effective. It's important to note, though, that this was a post hoc analysis, and so it'll be important for this sort of study to be replicated prospectively. There is very little else from the point of view of specific experimental pharmacological studies, but there is a meta analysis which suggests that the COX 2 inhibitor drug celecoxib is a useful adjunct to the first line treatment of major depression with either serotonergic or noradrenergic and antidepressants. So 
In terms of one's practice, I think the evidence for using drugs such as NSAIDs isn't clear whether that will be helpful. Possibly selexicoxib is worth trying if one's aware of the various medical contraindications and side effects that might be associated with its use. So the key points I'd make there is that inflammatory processes may play an important role in depression, particularly in patients who have resistant depression that doesn't respond to conventional pharmacological treatments. And a meta-analysis suggests that the COX-2 drug, celecoxib, might be helpful as an adjunct to first-line treatment in serotonergic and noradrenergic antidepressants. But it hasn't been systematically studied yet in patients with treatment-resistant depression.